First up, I want to um, say hello to everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm terrible about remembering to introduce myself, so I will do that today. I'm Stacy King, and I am your host for today's training for Agent Tarot. Um, first up, I want to talk to you all about a couple of items uh, just to make sure that things go smoothly. We will have everyone muted during this presentation, but be sure to add any questions that you might have to Q and A. And there's a Q&A box in particular. That's where all your questions will go. And during um, the presentation, if there are any questions, uh, we have someone who will be monitoring that as well as myself. Um, and we'll get those asked of Nick so that we don't interrupt his flow and he can, you know, uh, address everything as it comes up. In addition, um, the chat window is available. So if you have a message for any of the panelists, you know, you need to let us know something or you just have a comment, add those to the chat window. And um, also, please welcome Clivens Delaney, who is our ADM for Agent Tarot. And he is going to be joining us um, as well to help out and just make sure everything goes smoothly. smoothly. You can say hi, Cliven. Hello, hello. Yep. If you guys have any questions in the chat box, I will be monitoring that. Any specific Agent Tarot questions or anything I can help in that aspect, be gladly to do so. Uh, our speaker for today is just wonderful. I've known him for quite a bit, and uh, he's done all kinds of amazing things in his career. He happens to be the marketing operations manager for Better Agency, where he brings 20 years of sales experience and marketing as well. Uh, he, including the last six years where he's focused on broker tech companies in particular. When he's not managing marketing systems, he's likely sipping on craft beer. He is a big beer aficionado. <laughs> and uh, he also loves to tinker and make all kinds of cool stuff, building side projects to keep his skills sharp. Uh, we were talking about that off camera, that he and I both love to play around with new technology, and we're always the ones that um, call ourselves the guinea pigs, which is fun. Nick is a proud U.S. Air Force veteran and a family man with four children. I don't know how you do it, but <laughs> bless you. And uh, we're excited to have you here. Welcome, Nick. Thanks. I uh, I, I was super honored when you asked if I wanted to do this. And uh, one of the things I've been trying to get through agents' heads for the last six years is email. Uh, email and SMS marketing is a channel that I think is probably expanding uh, more than people realize. Uh, so uh, I appreciate it and look forward to, yeah, ask any questions. If you have a question about what I'm presenting or anything else, email marketing, email and SMS marketing, drop it in. I'll help, I'll answer, help answer too. But uh, I'm going to get started. Uh, so for, everybody see this okay? All right, good. Uh, so for the last 20 years, I've been in sales and marketing. Um, like like, like uh, Stacy said, I uh, last six years of broker tech focus. Um, so I've gotten to know the insurance industry really, really well. Um, and so these are kind of my thoughts on sending better emails uh, and SMS messages uh, to help you grow your agency. First thing, we're going to just kind of start on some stats. Um, email is 40 times better at acquiring new customers than Facebook and Twitter. Um, and that's organic, paid ads, everything. The way I look at it, uh, organic and paid digital marketing channels like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and everything else, all of the other, all those channels, they are good at getting your message out. But once you get a prospect or a client email, that's where the power comes in. That's where you have the ability of having an owned channel that isn't something you're paying for consistently, like paid ads or organic posts. 
email marketing has a two times higher ROI than cold calling, networking, and trade shows. And this is, I've seen this, I've experienced this. This is a legitimate statistic. It's email marketing and SMS marketing is significantly higher return, return on your investment and time. And this statistic, um, it's a B2B stat, but it's very consistent across B2C also, uh, insurance related. 5% uh, of your prospects are only 5% of your prospects are in market to purchase from you at the time of engaging with you. Um, it may be a little higher, maybe a little lower, but this is what, so th what this means is when they are engaging with you for the first time, only 5% are ready to buy right now. That's where the power of email marketing and SMS marketing comes in. Being in front of them when they're ready to make that purchase is most important. Just, it doesn't matter whether they've requested a quote right now, they're just signing up on your website for more information, whatever. Those being able to reach the other 95% of people when they're ready to buy is the whole point of email and, email and SMS marketing and marketing automation. This one is my, one of my favorites. Um, the way people write email, so many people write email like they're a high school essay. Nobody wants to read a wall of text, period. Nobody. There is nobody that says, oh, look at this nine page email for my insurance agent about an insurance topic. Um, and we'll get we'll get into this. But what I do is I break up my emails to a maximum of three to four sentences per paragraph. And the longest email you will see me write will be a four to five paragraph email, period. Um, if you can't get the point across in less than five paragraphs, you need to step back and reevaluate what you're writing. That's that's where we come in on there. <sighs> My favorite thing people ask me is how often should I send emails and when should I send emails? Um, my goal is to send one a minimum of one email a week to a prospect, um, maybe once every two weeks to customers. Um, just, you know, and for us, we do it, and this is how we do it. Prospects, um, once they have a call with our team, they will get um, they will get put into a campaign that's 15 emails long. It's big idea, product, big idea, product. So it's so for seven weeks, they will get two emails from us every week. It's a little excessive, but that's just my cycle. For an insurance agency, what I would do, and we have to remember, our, our, the, this is a controversial, I've gotten pushback with agents on this. Insurance isn't the product. Customer experience is the product. How you make people feel is the product. So that's how I would approach what you're sending and how often you're sending them. Now, I have a, there are a couple times that I have found best that work for um, B2B, um, Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 10 a.m. Those are my golden times for commercial or B2B prospects. Um, personal lines, and this is just, just so I can get a chuckle out of you, but I call it toilet times. So it's basically when people are most likely to be on their phone. Um, for especially for personal lines clients, uh, prospects and clients. Um, those times are early in the morning when they're, you know, just getting up. Um, and then I like between 10 and 11 a.m. Um, for sending promotional content. So those those 6, 7.30 to 9-ish uh, and then 10 to 11. Um, again, I like, to, I like Monday through Thursday. Friday, nobody really wants to open an email. Let's just be real. <laughs> um, text messages. Now this is tech, uh, SMS. This is where we get a little um, more stringent because there are federal laws that will impact your business if you break the rules. Um, so everybody is aware of TCPA. Um, so a get explicit written permission um, with a, a form on your website. If you're using uh, you know one of the main website providers, they all use Gravity Forms. So you have a record of of opt-ins and everything else. So make sure you're putting that opt-in in your CRM and management system. Um, I would say a minimum of every two months to send an SMS. Um, SMS, I'm probably not going to be sending or recommending you send content, um, checking in, and we'll get into what you should be sending. Um, same, same, uh, similar timeframes. Um, the FTC laws and rules are, you know, basically business hours, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'd say same things. Morning. Is probably going to be your best bet for your your commercial clients. 
Um, same thing with your personal life clients. You might be able to get away with after dinner, but like reality, think about it, how, you, how you're receiving text messages and what makes you feel happy and good. Um, getting a text message at seven o'clock at night from my insurance agent doesn't make me feel good unless, unless it's one of the things we're going to talk about later about why they're sending the text message. All right. So any questions about frequency and timing and how often anybody should be sent, you should be sending emails and texts? No questions yet. All right. Cool. Oh. How are we getting leads? So that's another subject. Um, <laughs> um, leads, it, how you're getting leads right now, um, paid advertising, um, email newsletters, um, organic posts, being active in your community, however you're getting leads right now, that's how I would recommend it. Now, this is the meat, this is the meat and potatoes of the content you should be sending. Um, a, lead with value. And every marketer, I know, I hear it every day and I get frustrated with the same answer, value first. Value doesn't have to mean money, monetary, mon monetary value. It can be educational. It can be humorous. It can be entertaining. Um, the things you see on TikToks, the, th the content you see on TikToks is shorts and reels. Um, though that kind of stuff can be valuable content to send to your, your, your prospects. Make sure you're personalizing it. Collect, you know, when you're collecting leads, get their names, get their emails um, so you can personalize it. Patrick just asked, texting is such a high read rate. Why am I so high on email? Email is more passive. Email is more um, less permission based. Like it, everybody implies, you put your email in, you're going to get emails from me. Texting is more permission based. And we'll get into what the content of why I would recommend. <laughs> Jamie is the worst. Yes, he is. That's why he's there. Um, now, same thing. You're going to see this on this next slide. Um, Nashville's does that. Oh, I, I moved myself. There we go. <laughs> Have a little fun in your emails. Um, and I recommend moving, uh, creating adjacent content. What does adjacent content mean? It means non non-insurance related content. If you're a personal lines agency focusing on your community, create or create community-based content um, for your website, for your videos, for your email. Create, uh, find other professionals in your, in your community, in your network that you can create content with. Um, that's all valuable stuff you can send. Businesses, other businesses in your community, you know, things that are going on in your community, volunteer opportunities, all of those things are things you could be sending to your, your prospects and your clients. Um, being connected to your community puts you, puts you at an advantage over everybody else and all the direct writers you're competing against. So SMS. So these are the things, that, and this is just my experience on what I've seen people have the most success with. Um, Pre-renewal, send an SMS. If you've got opt-in, you've got permission, send an SMS 30 to 60 days before the renewal to start that experience process with you. Um, claims updates. If somebody's filing a claim, you have permission to, to if they put their, their, asset, their text in, you have permission because it's a business-related communication. Talk to them about, keep them updated on what's going on with their claims if you're handling claims. Um, natural disaster and severe weather. Uh, this is one we, I created some content about a few months ago, um, post the, the last hurricane that hit Florida. Um, being able to communicate how people can file a claim, resources for them, and uh, checking in on post severe weather. Those are three things you could easily and do with your SMS messaging. Um, and make sure you're personalizing as best you can. Put the, you know, get the name, get their first name, get their nickname, put that in. You're more likely to get responses and, and reads on and, and interactions with your texts. Um, and be human. Be a human when you're communicating with people. I can't emphasize that enough. If your messages come off as robotic, people will interact with you like you're a robot. That's just my my little soap soapbox. Uh, and we're moving pretty quick in this, so I don't know if we're going to take up the whole hour. But uh, so, anybody have any con questions about content um, of SMS messages or emails? We'll leave this one kind of open because Patrick kind of blindsided me in the middle of the last one. 
Clive and Stacey, do you guys have any thoughts on this stuff? Yeah, I would I would just say that, you know, you, you know, you're spot on. At, at the end of the day, people want to communicate with people. They don't want to be sold to all the time. I think there's a lot of agents out there that um and, and not just agents, companies out there that get into that, you know, I'm sales are so important and I need to constantly be sharing how great we are. Sometimes it just needs to be an entertaining message or um, a community type of message, or how can I help you do what you're doing better? And like you said, if there's no expertise in something, you can find someone with an expertise that you can bring in and provide that value to your clients. It doesn't have to be your show. That's the, the biggest takeaway that I, I loved what you said. Oh, Tanya had a, a great question. Don't I find emails go to spam? They can, but if you're following best practices, if you're following all the rules, if you're going through and setting up all the technical aspects of your domain and you're not spamming, you're not cold email, hey, this is not a cold email conversation. This is people who have opted in to have a conversation with your agency. But if you're following all of the rules and you're playing and you're setting up all the technical things, you're setting up DMARC, you're setting up the SPF and all of those things with your email marketing provider, you should not go to spam. Now, and this is I this stuff that so there's some st some stuff about that didn't make the cut for the presentation deck, but I'll touch on that real quick. A um, email providers are no longer really looking at subject lines for flagging for spam. They are mostly looking at your domain authority, your domain history, and um, those are the primary drivers. The other thing that didn't make the cut is email subject uh, email subject lines aren't as important as most people think. I uh, I have a campaign. The average email subject line length is 78 characters. <laughs> my my one of my salespeople was like, isn't that too long? I'm like, I don't know. We're getting 45% open rates. So maybe it's not about what the con so the the email email open rates are more often driven by who is sending the communication and are they expecting to get that communication from you. So that's the uh, so when you're creating that content, um Make sure that they're, you know, setting that precedence and setting the expectation in the email. That, that, that campaign I was talking about earlier with the 78 character length. Every email is, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what you're going to learn. And this is what you should expect from me when. We're so I'm, I'm just doing that who, what, why, and, and when kind of scenario. Um, it depends. <laughs> Uh, Tanya's next question. Do you utilize a, a MailChimp type service or do you hire some other platform? So it depends. Um, this is what I would do if I was an insurance agency. I would use my marketing automation CRM AMS tool for my customers. This isn't going to be a very happy, like I, I know if my boss hears this and uh, anybody else here, I say prospects probably should be in a third party tool. Just because it's you can protect your domain, your sending domain from getting flagged as spam. That's it's not very popular when CRM companies say that, but it that's that's how I would do it. Um, just just putting that out there. Um, so it just depends. Um, depends on your resources. Depends on, but most you know our product, Agentero, I'm assuming can handle those things. But it's just depending on your volume and how many prospects you're sending emails to. That's how I would put that how I would do it. Oh, all right, let's move on. Great questions, Tanya. Um, so we're kind of getting pretty close to wrapping the things up. This is pretty quick. It's it's kind of high level, um, but this is what I would do to create content. Um, a, create a list. Just, I use Notion. I use Notion as my dumping board. I have it on my phone. I have it bookmarked on my both of my profiles, my personal and my company profile on Chrome. Um, so I can, if I have something that comes up, I have a little idea board and it's that's where I put in my content and I share it with my CMO and he creates a content and then I rewrite it and do all the other stuff. Um, set aside time every week to create email and, and content. Um, this is important. This is you, in order to be successful, you need to have a plan. So what I do, this is my content creation calendar. Um, I like to send emails on Thursday. It's my preferred day. Um, I've just seen the most success. So Fridays, I have two idea days. 
Mondays, I have researched so I can back up my claims when I'm running my mouth off on subjects like this. Um, I write Monday night. Tuesday night, I edit. This is just a just something I have learned that works for me and just every every writing workshop I've ever taken. Don't just write, just brain dump everything and then edit the next day. Give your brain 24 hours to think about it. And then Wednesday night, I review everything and I publish. I publish, publish the content and I publish the, and I schedule the email. That's my content creation calendar. Super easy. I don't think it's not too, you know, I don't, I'm not going to tell you to do anything that's going to be overcomplicated. And then the next is just make sure you're implementing and using your email and SMS marketing automation tools. That's it. Put it in there, send it out. I, I, and I'll, uh, let's be honest, I send out an email to a list of a couple thousand people pretty regularly, and I get nervous every time I hit send. I, it, I triple check. I, I read my emails out loud. I do all the tricks. I triple check the list, make sure I'm not sending it to the wrong list, all of that stuff. And I get an anxiety, mini anxiety attack every time I hit schedule. So it's just use it. Just, um, and that's kind of the thing. Uh, one of the things I've always said is just send more emails and communicate more often and you will sell more of the thing you're trying to sell. That's it. That really is it. Um, so anybody have any questions about those, the content calendar, action items, or any of the other stuff we covered? I think that, um, you know, a lot of people are so frozen with fear on being perfect that they don't do things. And especially in 2023, if we can say anything as marketers, you don't have to be perfect. If you think that's the case, you know, get on TikTok, watch what happens. <laughs> uh, people do, people are no longer, now I'm not saying don't be professional. Um, you know, if you, if that's your, your thing and you want to be professional, you can still be professional, but you can also show a personality and have some authenticity in it. Yep. So, um, you know, that's a great takeaway. Yeah. So, uh, and I, it's just, it's been a kind of a thing with me for like, it's just, just send more email, you send more email, you'll make more money. <laughs> yes. Send more text messages, you'll stay in communication with your clients and your prospects. Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll keep it. It's, it's, it's all relationships. It's all staying in front of them for when they're ready to buy, when they're ready to make a decision and when they're just being there and when they need you. Cause that's what, that's what our promise is for with insurance is you're going to be there to take care of things when bad things happen. So if yeah. they trust you, they're going to buy from you and stay with you longer. Yeah. And nothing's changed from years back when it was called drip marketing. You know, you're just basically, Hey, I'm here. Hi, I'm here. By the way, here's a tool. By the way, here's some content. By the way, here's something entertaining. That's yeah. all you're doing. And then eventually the day will come where that person will go, oh my gosh, you know, I what was that guy's name? Or what was that company that that is always sending me some stuff? Um, you just want to be there. And, and as far as content ideas, I love that you said, you know, you've got the calendar, but then you're setting aside time to write. And, and I always say, you know, look in your inbox. What are the people asking you about the most? Oh. Oh. And, and there's gold in that inbox. Look yes. at everything that you're getting and then take that content. Take the people that are answering those phones, your CSRs or whoever it is, and say, send me your top, say, five or 10. Now you've got those 10 from each of those people. Now you develop each of those into a piece mm -hmm. of content. And then watch the numbers. When you send out those emails, look at the stats. Are the analytics good on one in particular? Well, if that one's good, now you're going to have kind of a series that you're going to go into a little deeper and a little deeper. You can, yep. you can do it differently. You can do a video one time, or you can do a blog post one time. There's so much that can be done. Yep. So uh, Patrick just asked another question. Do you recommend segmenting your list into prospects and clients or would insurance and adjacent content go to both? Um, a, you should always be segmenting your, your prospects and your clients. They're going to be a little bit different content most of the time because you're trying to stay it's prospects. You're trying to stay in front of them. You're trying to get them to take action. Um, so you might want to tweak that content that you're sending to them, to those two different lists. But I, I, I if you have the ability to and you have the time to segment, segmenting out your customers and your prospects should be priority. And then, yeah, creating that content. Um, a couple of resources that I forgot to mention. I mean, I didn't put it in the deck. Let me. 
uh, so A, uh, I, there's a handful of tools I really like. Grammarly and Hemingway. I use Hemingway all the time. I It's bookmarked. I Anything I write, I dump into Hemingway. I, I use it to grade to make sure I'm not being overcomplicated and using big words. Um, Grammarly is pretty good, very good at that too, but Hemingway has just always been a one I've used before Grammarly launched. Um, I read, there's this tool called CoSchedule and they have this freemium headline analyzer. Um, I use that to score my head, my, my subject lines. Super simple, easy to use. If you're struggling to create visuals, Canva is amazing. I, we, <laughs> we use Canva all the time. Um, we need to do a whole class on Canva. Let's yeah. just be honest. Yep. Yeah. So, I've used it for years and years and years. And there's just so much that can be done. It's simple, yeah. easy. Um, answer the public. It's a really cool website. It, um, basically you can find questions. That, so you can just type in homeowners insurance and answer the public will give you a list of homeowners insurance topics. Um, another tool that's freemium I, that I use is BuzzSumo. So you, again, you can take that topic from answer the public, feed it into BuzzSumo, and it will tell you on the freemium, you just get the top five, the top five most popular uh, posts about that topic. So you can go and look at it. And I, and let's be realistic. I'm a marketer. I steal everything. <laughs> I will look at other people's, and I, that's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's how the, the internet works. I take content, look at it, see how it's formatted and make it relevant to my audience. I'll, if it's, if I'm straight up copying, I'll, I'll link back to it. I'll refer to it, but it's, it's okay to look at other people's content for inspiration of how, you, how, what you're writing and what you're creating. Um, and then notion, I, like I said earlier, I love notion. Um, and the, there's a little, going to be a resource uh, page here in a minute. You're going to be able to go to, you're going to be able, and in that is a link to 24 content ideas that I put together that are non-insurance related. You can be able to out, download that's it. So those are, let me get back into this right here. And here, here they are. It's terrific. But Lots of you, great ideas and, and gold in all of this, hopefully for agents that are looking and struggling with their email content. Yep. Um, and I, I know it was, uh, gracious enough to allow me to let if you want to if you have any email marketing questions i'm more I, I set up a special calendar um one session a day is open um to book a call with me to talk about your email marketing strategy you tell me what you're doing and i will tell you what i would do um and there's no there's no say i'm the marketing operations person there's no sales pitch from me i want my i want everything to come in on my own laurels so there's <laughs> Um, and if you, so if you go to nickberry.co slash download, that's my personal site. Um, you'll get all these resources and there's, uh, be able to download this, this, uh, this deck links to all those resources and the link to book that call with me. So nickberry.co, I'm going to put it in the chat right now for everybody. All right. Tanya asked, do you put a newsletter sign up on your site? How do people opt in? If not. If you if you're going to create a, a a newsletter, put an opt-in on your site. Put it in and just say what it is, what the intention is, and how often they'll get it. Um, at our previous company, when I joined the company, they had this newsletter sign up. But here's the other thing: if you're going to ask people, tell people to join your newsletter, be able to take action on it. Uh, this other company, I came in and I found this newsletter list. Seventeen hundred people had opted into the newsletter. They never sent a single email. <laughs> it's just wasted effort. I don't. I don't understand. Well, and I get it. Like, I like this is my job, and I struggle with keeping up with it sometimes. But as a business owner, these are the things we have to do um, to be successful. That's it. That's that's my that's my spiel. Send more emails. Send more text messages. Be a human being and have a little fun. Love it. 
Thank you so much, Nick. It's been um, wonderful as usual, and I appreciate you sharing all of your expertise and advice and tools. And um, I think you and I could geek out for a very oh, long time. <laughs> we'll yes. to do another series in the future because I always love hearing you and talking with you. And 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 of course, you know, sharing tools and and tips is always fun. Um, I also want to thank Clivens for joining me. Um, he's always very helpful during these sessions and watching the Q&A and making sure everybody's good. If you have any questions for us with regard to Agent Tarot's platform, specifically Cliven's your guy, and you can send those um, via sales at agentarot.com and someone will be uh, monitoring those and, and we'll get you the answer right away. And um, from the Agent Tarot team, thank you for allowing me to host. And um, thanks everybody for attending. We hope that you got something great out of this and uh, we look forward to the next one. Please join us. Mm -hmm.